we are going to take derivatives using the easiest basic power shortcut that you're ever going to learn. So we got a basic power shortcut. We're also going to learn some basic trig derivatives. And so let's get right to it there, all right? If you have a variable raised to a number, right? If you have x to the n, when you take the derivative, it's going to be nx to the n minus 1. So you're going to multiply by the power, decrease the power by 1. So let's just do several quick examples here, okay? So the first derivative, you're just going to multiply by that power, and you're going to decrease that power by 1. There's your first derivative. If you have negative exponents, that's fine. If the problem start off like this, one over x to the third, you would rewrite it as x to the negative three because you want it as x raised to a power before you take the derivative. And then you're simply going to multiply by the power and then decrease that power by one. So you're gonna subtract one from that exponent. Make sure you go to negative four there, not a negative two. And then general rule is we're always gonna get rid of the negative exponents make those exponents positive. So drop that down to the bottom. It's going to be negative 3 over x to the fourth. So we always get rid of the negative exponents. That's going to help us out in our next chapter when we start doing max and mins. We're going to want everything simplified as much as possible here. If it doesn't look like x raised to a power, then sometimes you could do legal algebra to change it to x raised to a power. Like we're going to have to do something on here. We're going to have to do something here. So I can rewrite this one as 5x to the 2 thirds. Sometimes people switch that around. They put a three halves there, so be careful there. The inside number's on top, the outside number's on the bottom. And then you have a number raised to a power. And then if you've got a constant on the outside, when you take the derivative, you just take the 2 thirds times it by the five. So you're gonna multiply by that power. That's gonna give us a 10 over three. And then you're gonna decrease that power by one. Now, when you subtract one from that, you're gonna see so many fractions this year. So you're, you're thinking like you're subtracting a three over three right there. That's going to be to the negative one third. And then again, we need to simplify our answer, get rid of the negative exponents there. All right, so the derivative of 7x is just going to be 7 for a couple of reasons. One, this is a linear function. The slope of that line is 7. We said derivative is slope. So if the slope is always 7 because it's a line, then the derivative is always 7 because derivative is slope. Also, if you use your power shortcut, that's x to the first, right? So if you multiply by the power, you're going to get 7. And if you decrease that power by 1, you're going to get 0. And then that x to the 0 power is just going to be 1. So 7 times 1 is going to give us 7. So in general, anytime you have a number times x, the derivative will always be that number. And then if you have just a constant, that derivative will be 0, OK? For two reasons. One reason is if you rewrite that as x to the 0 power, because that's still equal to 4, <coughs> When you multiply by that power, you're going to get 0 times x to the negative 1. So you're going to get 0 divided by some finite number there. So you're going to get 0 for that. Also, this is a horizontal line. y equals 4 is a horizontal line. And if you're giving me the derivative, you're giving me the slope. And since the slope of a horizontal line is 0, that derivative is equal to 0. Now, what you can't do when you have quotients, when you have products, is you can't take the derivative of the top, which is 2x minus 3, and then do the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, and then say your answer is 2x minus 3 divided by that 1. You can't do the top and bottom separately and then divide. If you have a product, you can't do the derivative of each one separately and then multiply, okay? But notice right here, this is going to be, even when we learn something called a quotient rule, you don't want to use the quotient rule on this one, okay? If I put an x minus 4 in that, in that denominator, then you can't do this yet with this basic power rule shortcut. If I put an x minus 4 in the denominator, then I must use the quotient rule on that problem. But since you have a monomial, and this is going to be true for derivatives and integrals, anytime you have a monomial, this is why I call it that over that, that over that, that over that problem, right? We're going to put that over that, that over that, that over that. I'm going to rewrite this function, not taking a derivative yet. I'm going to put x squared over x, which is x, 3x over x, the x's will cancel, I'll get a 3. And then 1 over x, 1 over x isn't helpful to me, but I know 1 over x is the same thing as x to the negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite it like that. And then I'm going to take the derivative. So the derivative, that's like the 1x. The derivative of 1x is just 1. The derivative of a number is 0. And here we're going to multiply by that power, decrease that power by 1. And then we're going to get rid of that negative exponent. In a future chapter, we'll probably get a single fraction for this, get a common denominator and a single fraction. But right now, we're OK right there. Since we'll see a bunch of problems with fractions in it throughout the year, I just want to throw an example in there with the fraction. I'm going to use this notation. Remember, this notation also means the derivative. That's dy dx. But with the fractions, you're just going to multiply by the power, decrease that power by 1. So it's like you're subtracting a 2 over 2 from that. So that's going to become a 1 over 2. And then you're going to multiply by the power. You're going to go negative times a negative. It's going to be a positive. Multiply by that power, 
decrease that power by one, so I keep subtracting a seven over seven, which is gonna give you a negative 11 over seven. <clears throat> and again, in the future, we'll probably go ahead and factor this somehow or get a common denominator, one single fraction. But for right now, I just need you to get automatic with your power rule shortcut. You just want you to do a bunch of these and they're gonna all go quick, they're gonna all be easy. I just need you to practice that so it's like automatic in your head because that shortcut will be inside a bunch of other shortcuts when we learn other techniques. Here. Something that you don't know how to do yet, if I give you like a 2x plus 3 to the 80th power, um, you know, maybe we got to write that down 80 times, multiply all that stuff out, and then, and then take the derivative, right? But listen, we're going to learn a different shortcut in the future of how to handle stuff like that. What we're about to do now is do some basic trig functions, okay? So what I want you to do is just pause the video and then write down all of your six basic trig functions for the derivatives. Here's the original function. There are derivatives. We need to have this list memorized, okay? In the future, we will change the angle. So I just want you to have it memorized like derivative sine is cosine, derivative cosine is negative sine, derivative tangent is secant squared, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And then when we change the angles, instead of just an x, well, we just want those patterns down, all right? We just want to have those memorized properly. <clears throat> um, couple of shortcuts here to help you remember it. The C derivatives are the ones that have the negative sign. So like, you know, the derivative of cosine is negative, the derivative of cosecant and cotangent, those begin with the letter C. Those are the ones that have the negatives in front of them. Also, if you know the derivative of secant is secant tangent, the derivative of cosecant, think about it, you got the negative there, and then you just use like the other weird trick function. And then instead of tangent, you're going to use cotangent right there. If you know the derivative of tangent is secant squared, the cotangent, you, of course, you got the negative there, but then it's like the other weird trick function squared right there. So there's some, just a couple things there that might help you to remember those, make note cards of those. I always suggest make a note card of these, tape it up to your mirror and just study those, look at those constantly. Every time you brush your teeth a couple times a day, study those trig functions right there. Because and if you don't know your trig, then I get to accuse you of like not having not having the minty fresh breath and brushing your teeth regularly like you're supposed to. So help out your dentist, help out your parents by not paying for any cavity bills or anything like that. And then just make sure that you study your trig every time you brush your teeth and then and then you got those trig derivatives down. All right. So make sure you got those down now. If we go do these, what we're not learning yet, like if I give you cosine of power 2x, we're not quite ready for that yet. That's gonna be a different function, right? So you guys, you guys are just rookies right now. You know, you're just gonna handle single x's in this section. But just a basic example, if you have a constant in front, you're allowed to just carry that constant down. And then you're just gonna do the derivative of cosine, get stuck, look at your list, the derivative of cosine is a negative sign. And so you're just gonna get a negative sine of x right there. And then there's your derivative. If I give you what is it, like y equals seven tangent of x, you're gonna, hey, y prime equals, if you're not sure what the derivative of tangent is, the derivative of tangent is just secant squared. And so you're just gonna carry down your seven and the derivative of tangent is your secant squared. So it's just straight have those things memorized like we're supposed to. All right, and then I just wanna do one problem where we just do a big string of things. When it's separated by plus and minuses, you just do each one separately, all right? If you have products and quotients, you know you can't do each one separately, but pluses and minuses, we can just separate those. And I just want you to get ridiculously fast at this without even thinking, right? So you're just gonna multiply by the power, decrease the power by one. Multiply by the power, decrease the power by one. The derivative of a number times x is just that number. The derivative of sine, all right? If you're not sure, check your list, but the derivative of sine is gonna be a cosine. And the derivative of a number is just going to be zero, right? All right, so this most of that section like just practicing your power rule shortcut. It has your basic trig functions in there. And then a couple of just general rules here. We said before that you are allowed to have radicals in your denominator. That's fine. You got to pull out the perfect square. So, so if it's a square root of 12, you got to rewrite that as a 2 radical 3. But if you get an answer of like 7 over square root of 2, you're allowed to rationalize that if you want to, but you could just leave that at 7 over radical 2. That would be perfectly fine. And then in general, no negative exponents, like through the whole year, no negative exponents. I'm not, I don't care what the answer keys are doing or the back of the book is doing, no negative exponents in your final answer. That's why we see me miling here for you that I got the negative exponent, I got rid of that. Um, and like I said, that's just gonna help us out in the next chapter when we start doing some applications of the derivatives. And then something else that you're gonna encounter in this section is something, they're gonna ask you to find where you have a horizontal tangent line. 
Now, horizontal tangent, remember the derivative is a slope of the tangent line. So if I give you a curve, and I say find the horizontal tangent line, what it's eventually gonna hopefully end up being is like leveling off points on graph where it like levels off for a little bit or it gives us a maximum or a minimum. But if the slope of the tangent line is horizontal, if the tangent line is horizontal, that means the slope is equal to zero. So if the directions are asked us to find a horizontal tangent line, that's where the derivative is equal to zero. If they ask us to find where we have a vertical tangent line, think about what the slope of a vertical line is slope of a vertical line is undefined. So that means that's where the derivative is undefined. So if your derivative was equal to a fraction, then you would have a vertical tangent line where that derivative, that bottom part, the, denom the denominator of that derivative is equal to zero. So just think about those things. And then one final thing in this section is we're gonna start to talk about position velocity acceleration. So I just want you to get this down. It goes in this order, position velocity acceleration. and for now, when we're using just derivatives, it's going to go downward. So if I give you a position function, I say, what's the velocity? That's the first derivative. If I say, what's the acceleration? That's the second derivative of that position function. If you have the velocity already, take the derivative of the velocity, boom, that's going to be your acceleration function right there. In the future, we're going to do integration which is like anti-derivatives, right? You're going in reverse. So if I give you acceleration, as you get the velocity, you're gonna to need to integrate. If I give you velocity, as you get the position, we're gonna integrate it. So the integrals goes up that list. So you'll see this several times throughout the year. But right now, if I give you a position function, I ask you about velocity or instantaneous velocity, take that first derivative and plug in some numbers there. Also, what you'll have to do as well, just like the last section, when it says write the equation of the tangent line, Remember, everything you know about the derivative is still true. If I say find the slope of the curve or the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4, you take the 4 and you plug it into that equation right there. You're going to get 4 squared, 16 times 3, which is 48. The slope of that tangent line is 48. And then if you get that the slope of the tangent line is 48, and then if I say what's the slope of the curve, the slope of the tangent line, that's all you're left with right there. But if I say what's the equation of the tangent line at a certain point, then you either have that point and you do your point slope form, or if you have the x value, you can plug it into the original function, get the y value, and then do your point slope form with that. So you'll see the same directions as the, the last section when we did our main definition of the derivative. Just if you have to write the equation of the tangent line, it should be quicker now because instead of doing your main definition of your derivative to get that 3x squared, you could just simply do your shortcut to get your derivative, and then you could plug in to get your slope of your tangent line right there.